Today in Google Draw, we're going to learn how to make vector portraits. And we're going to eventually do this one, this one of Bob Ross. But before we do that, I need to go over a couple of things in Google Draw. We're going to have be creating a lot of shapes in here, and we need to know about the polyline tool. So the polyline tool is here under uh, the line. When you pull up your menu, it'll look like this. You use the down delta and go to the polyline tool and it allows you to make polygons so it connects it at um, and you get a close shape so what can happen with the polyline tool is that when you're clicking and making a shape you might click too close to that last um, point right there so say I really want to close the shape but I need I'm too close right there and if I'm too close what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and end the shape and you see how this line is not uh, connected so if that happens the only way to fix it is to delete it and to do it again so case in point don't click too close to the last click so uh, when you do this you are able to edit your points once they are in there so if I needed to edit this, say this point right here is in the wrong spot or I need to adjust it, what I'm going to do is select the shape and then I'm going to double click on it. I'm on my arrow tool. I'm going to double click on it and notice my guides change to purple. When they're purple, I have the vectors that I can pull and adjust and manipulate around to be a better part of my shape. So. The other thing we will need is um, in a range, we'll need to know how to group, and that's about it. So I'm going to get into showing you how to do the Bob Ross vector portrait. Um, I'm going to probably chunk these into a lot of different little videos so that if you're understanding the concept, you'll be able to go off and work on your own. Yours will probably end up looking a little bit different and that's okay but the first and foremost I want to give credit to the artist who I learned from as always we go to YouTube and Joshua Pomeroy is a graphic artist that I found who has a great web page um, some graphic designery stuff but he has these vector portraits and Google draws and he does amazing stuff look at some of these and he walks you through how to do certain ones like uh, Robert Blake, Ned Stark, um, etc. So, um, no, I learned from him and I'm adapting it to what we need, but he does have a whole bunch of these on here of characters that he made. I did Justin Timberlake with him. Um, I'm trying to find them. They're all down here. Okay. Here's some people that he knows. Here's some, oh, look at this lion, uh, Peter Capodari, Dan Hill, Robert Blake. We already said that these two people I don't know so anyway so in here you'll look for his Google drawings and I did this one with him the Justin Timberlake one you can do it with him and he'll talk you through how to do it some of these are time-lapse and like the Justin Timberlake's an hour long it is a step-by-step -step drawing process so just look for that as always isn't the internet really good when you use it for learning so you know just look at all the stuff that he has in here that he's done in Google Draw so he's also a graphic designer I know I'm repeating myself but anyway check him out he's a great guy so when you open up the template the Bob Ross vector portrait template it's gonna make your own for you this is how yours will appear it's gonna have a slightly blurry picture of Bob Ross it's gonna have a transparent background and I've already changed that page size to you to be a 10 by 10 inch uh, image size so that's already been done and I showed you in the last video on how to do that but I wanted everyone to start with this okay so when we begin we need to think about big shapes getting down to detail shapes big shapes down to the detail shapes and so one of the biggest ones we're going to deal with first is his face so when we do this we have the uh, magnifier up here we're going to zoom in on his face and yes it is a little bit blurry that's probably a little bit too much zoom I want to go back out a little bit um, and that is okay as you can see in this one we want kind of that cut edge type of look we're going to get that uh, sharp line we're using that polyline tool so we are going to get sharp lines that is what we want 
So what I'm going to first going to do is go up here to select my line and I'm going to go to the polyline. And I'm going to start clicking around the edge of his face. And remember, you don't want to click too close together. So as I'm clicking, if it's not perfect, that is okay. I'm going to just click, click, click and I can use my mouse key to move it down a little bit and continue clicking. What I want is a big area of this flesh tone, whether it's his chest, his neck, his ears, the shadows here, remember, are on his skin. Right there, it's going to be balancing with the shirt. And we're going to click around. And this is why I'm saying at some point, I'm going to start breaking these off into smaller videos so that you can continue on with what you know already. So you can see the blue outline. Oh, see, I just did it there. I clicked too close. Darn it. All right. So let's pause that for a minute. All right. Through the magic of pause, I went back, delete the line. Like I said, it's a pain in the neck, but it doesn't really take that long. And I'm continuing on clicking. And up here where his uh, Afro bangs are covering his forehead, I want to go ahead and get that upper forehead shape right now um, where it meets the most of his hair because those bangs are kind of transparent. So there we go. All right. So Bob Ross obviously does not have a blue face. So what we're going to do is go up here to the fill color and we're basically for his skin tone, we'll be using in this yellowish mustard range for his hair. We'll go into these darker ones and it's going to work out. So we're going to hit this light orange right now and we want to take our line and we want to tell it to be transparent. And I'm going to go back to a normal view. I need to go back to a smaller view is what I need to do. Oh, I need fit. All right. So now that we have his shape and there's basically nothing else in, that's being seen in this that I need for his skin, I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm just going to drag it over here and drop it. Okay. So really that's the process and you do need to hold your shift key down when you're doing this. And that allows me to move it directly on top of that. I have to go back to the fit in window view so that it fills what I need you to see. If you're able to do it at that enlarged view, that is fine. So I need to come back over this way. And now I'm going to look for some dark shapes on his face. So if you see how this side of his cheek is dark, and yes, there's a beard here. We'll deal with that later. How these creases in his cheeks um, from his smile, his nose, these dark things are what I'm looking for. I'm going to treat the eyebrow, eyebrows and eyes as its own whole dark space. Um, and we'll do the details on that later. So if you're looking at this area, we can do the big eye socket and then add the darker and the details in later. You can see how this comes in that way. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to click around and try and get big chunks of shapes. So as you're doing this, um, you can sit there and layer upon layer just remember that if you accidentally double click on something or click too close, it will, it will mess you up a little bit and you get irritated and you learn not to do it. So I'm taking this big side view and I'm going to go ahead just because it's going to help me. I'm going to go to this dark orange one and I'm going to go ahead and take my line out. And since I'm still on the polygon, a uh, polyline tool and I've done that, it will hold for the other ones. So I'm looking at that little crease right there. Perfect. I want to get this bottom part of his nose. Lots of clicking on this one. Kind of looks like a bird right now. 
And like I said with the eyes, I'm going to kind of click that area. And see what happens. He kind of looks horrible right now, doesn't he? We're going to make Bob look good. Bob's a good guy. Um, this area beneath his mouth is also. And this process is this, is adding these layers upon layers. It's almost like doing a cut paper exercise without um, paper is doing it through the computer. Now, when we're doing this, and if you find an area that you want to add to it, you can always add on to it. So I have this, and I'm going to select all the images. So I'm going to select these images, and I'm going to shift and drag them over. When I select them, though, I want to group them. So I can tell what's selected by the blue lines. And then I'm come up to arrange and I'm going to tell it group. If you're good with uh, remembering your keys commands, it's right here, command alt G or command alt shift G to ungroup. So that lets me move them as a unit rather than an individual piece. I'm going to zoom my uh, image to view fit in window. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my shift key down. And that means it's going to go right across and it's going to fit on that. And we have the beginning of our Bob Ross. Don't worry that these are little misaligned. That's okay. We will, if it bothers us by the end of it, we will deal with it later. So I'm now going to go back in and do some highlights. All right. So that's one of the reasons why having Bob a little blurry is no big deal is because we are doing cut paper essentially. So you start finding those five shades of value that we're doing. And when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and put it at light orange two and take that line off. I'm going to look at this area and kind of squint your eyes at it. And you'll start seeing these shapes and these five values. And yes, there are Photoshop programs that you could vector image this through, but this is way more fun. Get some of these highlights in there. The amount of clicks, oops, see, there's when that happened. The amount of clicks you have is one where it'll determine the shape and how detailed it is. You can really blow these things up and get really nitty gritty detailed. Uh, Joshua, um, he does that. I mean, if you look at some of his uh, vector drawings, they're just awesome. Oops, I went to the wrong one. All right, so I'm going to select these and group them, and then we're going to drop them on top. So arrange and group. And I need to go back to fit and I'm going to shift key and move it. And sometimes I have to kind of look at it to see, do I want to move it? And I can use my arrow keys. I can use my arrow keys to help adjust it. I want that nose just a little bit better. 